Eduardo Sanchez doesn't like horror movies. Well, I can see monster movies and all that stuff, but the movies that are like really creepy and scary, I just, I just don't have a good time, you know, at, <laughs> in the theater. This aversion to horror all started with The Exorcist. I was born in Cuba and we, I came to the United States when I was very young. So uh, Cuba, you know, my, my mom coming from, you know, Catholicism, the Exorcist was like almost like a documentary in my in my in my house. <laughs> it was like, all right, we're all gonna sit around as a family and watch The Exorcist. In, God, in the name of the Father and of the Son. So that the kids can figure, you know, realize how dangerous it is to mess with the devil. You know, so for me, I was like, man, the, you know, the devil's just there, you know, out there waiting, you know, just waiting to grab you if you, if you mess up. <laughs> Being afraid of horror films is ironic because Eduardo would go on to co-write and direct one of the scariest horror films of all time. And it was made in reaction to how unscary Hollywood had become. My partner, Dan Myrick and I, we were in film school together and we, we, we went to see a movie called, uh, I think it's Freddy's Dead, is one of the, Friday, Friday, one of the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies. It was the one with like um, Roseanne Barr and, and Tom Arnold. I want my children back. You know they bring him. We were just sitting there like, man, you know, like what happened to like the horror movies of like when we were kids that they would scare the crap out of us. And so they wrote a script. They found some actors. They raised a tiny bit of money and went to the woods for eight days. And this guy who doesn't like to be scared changed horror cinema forever. seems to be talking about these days. It's the Blair Witch Project. The Blair Witch Project. The Blair Witch Project. I am so, so sorry. The ultra low budget film, The Blair Witch Project, has taken in more than $113 million. Look, where are you going? It's a movie, fiction, even though it looks real. On opening day, the lines to see the movie went around the block. This is Let's Make a Horror, a podcast where three comedians who don't like to be scared try to write and produce a horror short film. I actually do get scared easily. Someone comes around the corner, a stranger, a neighbor, and I go, ah! <laughs> and I scare them, and they're kind of like mad at me. Over the course of nine episodes, you'll be a fly on the wall as we come up with ideas for monsters. I got one. This is my answer to, to movies like uh, The Babadook and stuff like that. This is called Chubba Chubba. <laughs> <laughs> Write spooky dialogue. Have a good night. Oh, I will. So tall now! You two took it off the page. <laughs> and you brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> and try our very best to make a scary movie. <laughs> Oh, why am I laughing like a ghost? This is scary for exactly a different reason than I thought it would be. It's, it is the hardest thing we've ever done. And when we run into trouble, and we will run into trouble, we will consult Hollywood experts who know their way around a jump scare. Hi, I'm Gillian Flynn. I'm the author and screenwriter of Gone Girl. This is this is Ron Chang. My name is Matt Gorley. There are very few things more fun than a horror movie, man. Just watch out for the nose flaring on any close-ups <laughs> when you're doing like panicked breathing. Will we make the next Blair Witch, or will it be more of a Freddy's Dead? I want my children back. It's Let's Make a Horror. Let's make a Let's make Let's make a Let's make Let's make a Let's make Let's make a uh, Mark, can you speak, please? Hi, this is Mark Chavez. Welcome once again to Chatting with Mark, um, <laughs> a podcast about just life and love. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to Let's Make a Horror. My name is Mark Chavez. I'm a comedian, actor, writer, and joining me on this spooky journey are my co-hosts, Ryan Beal. Ryan? <laughs> Hi, I'm so happy and honored to be on Chatting with Mark. It's my first time, and I'm excited to see where this conversation takes us. And Maddie Kelly. 
Hi, I'm Maddie Kelly, and this is my first time on Chatting with Mark. <laughs> <laughs> CBC gets a wind of this. They're like, we love it. We love Chatting with Mark. <laughs> gets a wind of this. If you're new here, this is our third season of Let's Make A. Previously, we've written a science fiction pilot and a rom-com feature script. But this is the first season where we will not only be writing a thing, but actually making the thing. Not making John Carpenter's The Thing. I mean, we'd, we'd be so lucky. Can you imagine? Anyway, I think this season will be the most challenging yet, because in previous seasons, we always had one host who loved the genre. This season, we know nothing. Sure, I've seen The Shining and Friday the 13th, but all in all, I really don't know much about horror. But I'm nothing compared to Maddie. Okay, well, I, haven't, I don't know how much I've gone into this with you guys before, but I don't watch horror movies at all. <laughs> this, is, this is great. <laughs> at all. And and the reason, and I, I think this is a double-edged sword for me with this project, because the reason I don't watch them is because I get really intense nightmares. Mm. So I don't need to feed into that. I'm kind of getting the show for free yeah. every night, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you don't but, need extra yeah. stimuli. Yeah. If I start writing those down... Maybe I could be quite good at this. Maybe, yeah. You know? But I am worried in terms of reference points, like like I haven't seen anything. Mm -hmm. Well, that... Ever. That's how I felt about rom-coms. Mm. And I was surprised at how many I've actually seen. And I think you'll be surprised you probably have seen... I think I you'll be yeah. surprised. Well, that, that's many. great, though. I haven't seen That'll that. be fun. Like, I like... Because yeah. that, that'll make our sleepover, which we will definitely do. Yes. Maybe more, more than fun. one. Yeah, yeah we yeah, might yeah. have to do a couple. Yeah. I have to do it in the day, because it's scary. Ooh. Yeah. I feel like... Well, when I was like 12, I wanted to, I wasn't allowed to watch violent things growing up also. So I wasn't like sensitized to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then all the other kids were like watching them and thought it was cool. So I was like, please, please just let me watch one so I can be part of this. <laughs> and then I picked Nightmare on Elm Street, which to this day is still my favorite Classic. horror yeah. movie. Freddy Krueger. Mm -hmm. And I watched it and it was just like, it's kind of like when you like want to get into jazz or whatever and you're just sitting there like, oh, God. I'm so, <laughs> so homework, yeah. homework watching. And I was like, I loved it. Let's get another one next weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't. While I haven't seen a lot of horror movies, watched them. Sometimes I get curious and I go read the Wikipedia synopsis. Okay. Oh. So sometimes I what, some examples you've read like the, uh, the movie Us uh, seemed oh, yeah. intriguing, so I went and read that synopsis. <laughs> So sometimes I do that. I could do that for this show whenever yeah. I want. Nice. If I'm not ready to watch yeah. the movie, I could catch up. So, yeah, we're novices when it comes to horror, which is exactly why, for our first interview of the season, we wanted to talk to Eduardo Sanchez. Not only has he made a dozen horror films and TV shows, but he's taught clueless actors how to make a horror film before. In fact, that is how they made The Blair Witch. The leads, Mike, Josh, and Heather, filmed everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we took them through a little mini film school before, you know, like camera, whatever. And and I remember um, Heather was was walking around with the camera zoomed in all the way. So <laughs> after the, we were like, if you're walking, you got to zoom out all the way because you know it's already shaky. Um, <laughs> oh, right. And um, you know, but but yeah, you know how it is. You can't stabilize a, a, a zoomed in image you know mm -hmm. so we taught them stuff like that but we liked that they were kind of learning because you know they were supposed to be film students they weren't supposed to be professional and we kind of you know we wanted that you know wanted them to make the characters that's why we call them by their real names and then is it true like you didn't have a like a script or like a fully written script right yeah yeah i mean you know, we wanted the film to feel real and we wanted to, you know, not have, we knew we were not going to write a script with dialogue. And so we wrote a script that had all the beats, but without dialogue. And because we knew that the movie was going to be improvised. Mm. So when it came down to shooting, uh, my producer, Greg Hale, he came up with the idea of like, why don't we leave the actors in the, in the woods, <laughs> uh, you know, the whole time, though, all, you know, eight days. And I was like, Dan and I were like, yeah, but how do you do that? <laughs> so he came up, he, he had been in the army and he had uh, he had actually been in an exercise where they throw you in the woods for like three days without any food and you have to like survive. And then uh, like a fake Russian battalion comes through and picks you up and takes you to like a POW camp. They waterboard you. Mm. Like they go all out and just to teach you like, all right, this is kind of, you know, that you could have, this could happen to you. So he was like, let's do that to the actors, you know, not waterboard them, but you know. <laughs> um, so he he came up with this system 
of like, you know, leading the actors like a scavenger hunt. But he basically, we set up like this, you know, go here at two o'clock, be at this place by sundown, be here, whatever. And we gave them like little directing notes, you know, three or four times a day that we would just leave in their camp. We would just leave in their campsite or leave in their, you know, in the waypoint. So we would say, go to waypoint five, be there by like three o'clock and look for notes, you know. Mm -hmm. And then in those notes, it would have like, logistical information about what you had to do the rest of the day, but also had like Heather's pissing you off and, you know, Mike is annoying. And I, you know, I just kind of personal, interpersonal kind of, you know, dialogue that was happening inside the characters' minds. And they weren't allowed to show it to the notes to each other, obviously. You know, and I think that like Blair Witch is um, a little different than most found footage movies because of that, because we literally were not around to to screw it up. <laughs> right. Some essential reading, how to stay alive in the woods, because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. Um, d- had you seen any um, found footage stuff? I mean, you like you started a whole subgenre. Yeah. What? Which is incredible. Like, did you invent it? <laughs> no, no. I mean, no. I mean, it's. I mean, I, I wish. Um, no. I mean, w- you know, from that meeting after the, you know, the Freddy's Dead movie. We actually spent the weekend like renting um, horror movies and just stuff that we liked when we were kids. Like, let's go back and watch the movies that scared us as kids. So we rented a lot, you know, Exorcist, I think, and Shining, and but we also rented these um, uh, these movies like like The Legend of Boggy Creek, and uh, we we found the uh, a couple of VHSs of like that old show In Search of with Leonard Nimoy, which. Dan and I like both agreed was like the scariest television we we had ever seen. And and it was basically like we love the idea of like these pseudo documentaries that treated everything as reality, you know, and like interviewed people who had seen Bigfoot or had, you know, had UFO mm. experiences. Like to us, that was like so creepy because like, you know, it's a documentary, man. I mean, it's like, you know, you people are telling you supposedly they're telling you the truth. And it's hard to to call everybody a liar when they're telling it to the camera, you know. And and those things really scared me as a kid. Like I remember watching, uh, you know, the Bigfoot episode of In Search of and having to like change the channel periodically. <laughs> but anyway, we we really love these kind of pseudo documentaries. So we were like, you know, I wonder if you could do that, you know, now. And mm, that's where right. the idea of Blair Witch came. So that's where the idea came from. But eventually, I mean, we we learned like while we were editing. I don't know if it was we were editing or it was after Sundance, but somebody sent me a movie called, sent us a movie called Cannibal Holocaust. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, but it's it was a movie like, in, it was shot in 1979. It's an Italian movie. And it was pretty much the exact story of Blair Witch, except mm. that it's they're going to Peru to like look for cannibals. And like this film crew goes to the deepest, darkest jungles of South America to look for cannibals. But Dan and I were, you know, we watched this movie and it's a tough movie to watch, Cannibal Holocaust. There's a lot of, he got, the director got into trouble. He he got charged with with uh, using cadavers in the movie. He had to prove yeah. that, he Whoa. had to prove that certain scenes that the people were still alive. Um, and there's uh, animal mutilation, like on camera, mm. animal mutilation. Oh. So it was, so it was actually banned in the United States. And that's why, you know, as a kid, I never saw it. Um, but Dan and I were both like, I remember watching like 20 minutes of it and like looking at each other and going, I mean, if we would have seen this movie as kids, we would have never done Blair Witch because we would have been like, well, that's, right. that's been done, you know, it, mm. you know, and it didn't do very well, whatever. Um, so it's kind of say our ignorance saved us. Right. So cool. And were, were you always planning to, to kind of do this ad campaign that it was a real Sto- like it was a real story like like talk about that like what what was the idea there that no man we 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 were like i mean you know we were like in our 20s and we th- talked about this a lot about like how do you do you market this as real or first of all can you get sued like you know what's the legal implications right. of like <laughs> lying to your audience but hollywood does it all the time so so we were just kind of like, well, you know, we'll figure that out later. And but our our whole thing was like, no, you can't really tell people that this is real. This is, you know. But then we so we sold the movie to Artisan, and the first thing they tell us is that they're going to market it as real. Like, don't tell anybody it's fake. <laughs> we're going to keep the actors out of the media for like two weeks, you know, after the release. And 
it was great that we ended up with Artisan because I think a lot any any other company would have had us reshoot the ending or you know just you know or we actually did reshoot the ending but they let us go with the ending that we wanted um but mm -hmm. you know they would have maybe maybe remade it like who the hell knows you know what would have happened so what was the alternate ending that they made you shoot that you that you didn't So the alternate with? endings are actually on the Blu-ray um cool. and they're like I mean, you have to understand our position. Like we were like, when you sell a movie, you don't get money right away. You have to deliver the movie, right. which takes months. Mm -hmm. um, right. And we had never delivered a movie <laughs> before. <laughs> so we were like completely broke after, you know, we were, we were broke before Blair Witch and we were really broke after Sundance. And um, so they were like, Hey, we'll give you, you know, this much of money. And we were like, Holy crap, that's a more money than we spent on the movie. So we went <laughs> for the, for the alternate ending. So we we're like, yeah, we'll go to back to Maryland and shoot some alternate endings yeah. for you guys. And I'm not saying that we sabotaged the endings, like by making them <laughs> cheesy. Like we really did. We really did try to like come up with like some, some alternate, but basically it, the alternate ending is just the final shot. You know, Heather coming down the hall, the, you know, the steps and yeah. then turning the corner and Mike is either like one, he was hanging, you know, he's hanging from a noose, like he hung himself. Yeah, yeah. Another one, he's hanging on this big giant stick figure, like, the, like a Christ, mm. like Christ, mm, I think with right. his chest, with his shirt open. <laughs> um, but, you know, at, in the end, you know, they asked us, like, what, you know, what ending do you guys want to go with? And we were like, we'd like the original right. ending. So, and I remember, like, the guy telling me, well, it's going to cost us millions at the box office, but we'll go with, we'll go with your, we'll go with your ending. I guess. And I'm like, I'm like, millions at the box office? I mean, this was back when we were what? like, millions? Are you crazy? If this movie makes $3 million, we're going to, I mean, are you crazy? So this is before, you know, any of us knew that it was going to, yeah. like, go nuts i remember seeing you guys on the cover of time magazine uh <laughs> like i remember that day like i don't know why i remember it, must, it just struck me yeah, because because it, because it, it looked like we we saw it in the supermarket and it looked like you know how you go to the beach and you get like your picture taken in front of like sports illustrated <laughs> on yeah. the cover that's yeah. that's what it looked like it looked like a mock like a mock cover yeah. <laughs> so, i mean you know like a novelty cover. <laughs> yeah, it was just, um, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, we remember that day too. Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> so we're, we're going to make a short, as I, as I mentioned to you, uh, can you, do you have any advice about like what makes a good horror short film? Well, the best advice I give to, to all filmmakers who are doing shorts is, Try to make it as short as possible because mm. it ups your chances of being programmed at festivals. Um, and also it ups your chance of people watching the, it on, you know, TikTok or YouTube or wherever you're going to put it because, you know, it's just the way it is. Like people, especially the younger crowd, that really is the main, yeah. you know, audience of horror. So, like, did you guys ever see the movie that Lights Out was based on, that little short? It was like, yeah, like a minute and a half, maybe two mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And he got, you know, that, those people got like a deal to make the damn uh, feature film version of it. You know what I mean? From that little mm -hmm. thing. So that's my main thing is like, keep it short. Yeah. Um, and then um, make something that scares you. Like for me, Blair Witch came from like my fear of the woods, you know, especially being, a, being right. alone in the woods, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, sitting, you know, camping and like here, you know, at 3 a.m. hearing something out of your, you know, outside the tent and it's probably a raccoon, but it sounds like a fucking bear, you know? So, you know, you're like, you know, so that, that, you know, that was what Dan and I tried to capture was like our fear of like being in the woods, being in the dark, try to come up with something that scares you. Um, and then as far as shooting it, you know, like for, you know, you, you horror is about isolation, obviously, mm. whether it's psychological or most, most of the time it's physical, you know? So think of, um, you know, think of a good way to isolate, you know, your characters um, in one way or another. And this in horror, it's super important is like you have to find the location, mm -hmm. find, you know, yes. a, the creepy house or the creepy woods or, a, you know, caves or, you know, you, like you look at that and, you know, that's what horror movies, you know, are about is this isolated setting. Jaws is the water, you know, the Blair Witch is the woods. 
Um, you know, Exorcist is an interesting one because it's psychological. It's like happens in suburbia, basically, and it's it's internal. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's an internal monster. Um, but you know, the 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 location will will guide a lot of how you shoot it and how this what the story you know is. Um, and then you and then you got to work around the self them having cell phones, which is the biggest <laughs> detriment hundred percent to horror films ever. Going into this project, we didn't really know where our filmmaking journey should begin. But after talking to Eduardo, I think he gave us a good place to start. Make something that scares you. After the break, we, we talk, talk fear. fear. I have a lot of fears uh, as I was thinking about this. There's like a lot of little ones. But um, why, don't we just, why don't we just go around and just start with our... What's our like, what's your biggest... What's your biggest, that's a hard one. What's your, what's your biggest fear? I don't know. There's so many, Yeah. like, for example, like I used to not like flying. I've mm -hmm. gotten way better at it. Mm -hmm. um, but is that a fear? I'm just uncomfortable. Yeah. Flying. Like it's not, I'm not scared of airplanes, you know? Mm. Wait, okay. What is the difference between your biggest fear, like something you're scared of and you think about all the time, mm -hmm. or like the worst thing that could happen to you that I'm thinking of right now? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think I, the, le the, Worst thing that could happen to me would be I'd be buried alive. But Ugh. I don't spend yeah. any time thinking about that. <laughs> I, I, you know what? Yeah. So I think that's. I think it's more that. Like the worst thing that could the happen. worst thing that could happen. Like 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 something that makes you so mm -hmm. like freaked out to think about. Not that you perseverate on every right, day, okay. but like something that's just. Like, I don't know if I use that correctly. That's so. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> so Yes, buried alive. Mm -hmm. oh. In a coffin or dirt? Just straight up dirt on the face. Coffin, I think, because you're banging on yeah. the coffin. Oh, oh, yeah. this, I mean, this this is me. Like, I'm Ooh, claustrophobic. It does give you a feeling, hey? Remember uh, back in the day, old-timey coffins, they'd put some water and, like, stuff in there just in case they did bury you alive? Yeah, so, and like, the bell. At the turn of the century, like, a little bell and such? Yeah. That's, I think that should just bring that back. <laughs> Do you know the bell? Was, was the bell tied to your toe, or is that? I'm just thinking like a coroner tag. Didn't know about the bell. I knew about the water in the coffin. Just the in case. no, the bell's real. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know about the bell. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then uh, yeah, the little. Have you ever in a grave? How a fast are they? Are they burying you? Super fast. <laughs> Big turnover. <laughs> <laughs> turn of the, the, the bell would need to be. Well, invented. I think in the olden days you would need to bury them pretty fast because of de of decomposing. There was no embalming and. Okay, and but not like fifteen minutes later, right? Like surely, if you're unconscious, <laughs> depends, you wake up. <laughs> depends on how you uh, in esteem with your family. You know, like they might want to put you on the ground real fast. And I think that um, uh, modern devices can kind of detect life better than maybe they did a hundred years ago. They didn't like, know about breathing. Well, I don't, Maddie, I don't know. <laughs> they hadn't quite cracked the case <laughs> on breathing. I don't yet. know. People were definitely buried alive. That has happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. With awesome. and without <laughs> bells. So they obviously but like- In the coffin, it would be terrifying. Yeah. Slowly running out of air, you know. Oh, can, like, uh. like, can you imagine waking up? So you, you go to bed at night. Feeling good. Mm -hmm. You wake up. take a up, melatonin. It's pitch black. <laughs> I put on sleep fruits oh, on this Spotify. this is strange. Yeah. Yeah. You, you think it's the covers, you're like moving, in, but you realize it's just hardwood and it's cold and you are in a coffin buried alive. You start banging, you can't hear it. Oh, oh, oh. Woof. Oh. Scary. Yeah. So that's... Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Buried alive. Buried alive. <laughs> I mean... One. Put it on the board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My number two fear, trying to do a PowerPoint presentation and the technology is not working. Oh, uh, yeah. That'd be rough. Isn't that bad? Remember in elementary school, you'd like... You when there's so an audience hard. of people waiting for you, yeah, and yeah that's it. Yeah, it's, I wouldn't say I'm afraid of that. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make me <laughs> scream the way being buried alive would make me scream. Right. Yeah. Um, but it is not it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ryan, do you have anything that's like that? Yeah, I tried to think about like when I was a kid. I think I've talked about this already too, but like what, what I was afraid of when I was a little one, and then that stuck with me. And I'm, I'm a big, I'm scared of you're not alone in the house mm. feeling mm. Uh, when I was like home for lunch or my parents were out and I would be like just haunted by like sounds and I'd be going room to room and then I'd be in this vicious circle that maybe they're just following me and I can't quite know if I'm ever alone. So I guess the, the fear of being hunted, like being prey, right. I guess that right. kind of gives me goosebumps. Can um, we 
take this back a minute. You said you were you were home for lunch. Did you go home How to you, eat I your lunch? That to, you were home for lunch. I walked kid home. In yeah, home, no, not in high school. It's an elementary school. You would eat. A, what? You would go home for lunch. Yeah, we lived. I lived close. Lived what? close to school. I went I home believe- and I make myself a little soup. Whoa! <laughs> but yeah. you're allowed to leave yours. We would never. Yeah. No matter how close we were, we would never have been allowed. to oh, yeah, leave we can school. go if you, if you. This makes sense for your personality. The the home for lunch kids were always like so stupid. much more confident. No, mm-hmm. because they they didn't have to partake in the environment. Yeah. Of, they, they, they weren't vulnerable. They were going home for lunch. And yet, right. when I was home for lunch, I was a feared. Wow. Yeah. I was a feared. Your parents were obviously gone. Your brother wasn't there. Yeah, my brother right. had friends to eat lunch with. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you went home? I don't know. Right. <laughs> it's like you didn't have to It was to kind be... of, part of the part of the equation. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that I could totally understand that one. Okay, so we have... Guy in house. Oh yeah. So, but Ryan, you said hunted. Like, well, just also, that like, feeling of being you're not alone. Someone's the hairs in the back. Of your, I don't really know how to categorize it because I'm also afraid of like being in a big open field and seeing someone far away and then they start running towards that's you. That's really good. You know. So that's kind of the same. You know. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. What like in a big life? open field. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so, so it's a field, it's big open this expanse. Something you've space. thought about yeah. multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I'm uh, going for walks, I guess. <laughs> if you like, in the distance. Someone emerges, let's say, from around the corner, and they they look at you, and you know that they 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 have bad thoughts yeah. about you, and wow. then they start running towards you, yeah. and then the chase is on. Yeah, right. so that's like the feeling of being hunted. Okay, right. yeah. What if you didn't run though? If you just stood there and waited, the hunter becomes the hunter. Yeah, the hunted becomes the hunter. <laughs> the hunter becomes the, the hunter becomes the hunter. A different type of hunter. <laughs> and the person that you know, they're not. It's not like Mark or you emerging from the trees. It's like a tall, lanky monster figure or something. And maybe yeah. they run like a, you know, like the on all fours run or something like that. Like something scary like right. that. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, that monsterish. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sure. I mean, that's like. That's a running on all fours. That's a full horror scene right yeah. there. I mean, that's 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 frightening. I love running on all fours. You love you love to run on all fours <laughs> no, personally. In, person. in the nightmare, it's you coming at you. <laughs> it's not a nightmare. It's a dream. I was gonna oh. say being locked in when mm. you're. Oh, that's, that's the, the worst. that's the worst mm. one. I think you're fully mm. mentally there, but mm. your body cannot move at all. Maybe you can blink and communicate with blinking, but maybe you can't even do that. And someone puts something on television, and you don't like what's on television. Oh. Yeah, like what? What? But what would that be? Someone puts on. <laughs> <laughs> What? what? Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm lying there. I've unable. seen this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen this <laughs> These fears may or may not influence what we end up making. But you know what will impact our short? Who's filming it? Who's directing it? Who's editing it? This season, we've got a lot more to figure out than what we're writing. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, okay. And riff start now. So we sat down with our producer, Dave, to hash out some of the details of this short film that for some reason we've decided to make, which I'm already regretting. First, we discussed how long the film should be. Okay. I suggest that we shoot, shoot for a three minute film. Yeah. Three how does three minutes. minutes sound? Three to five is my wheelhouse. I think it should well, be. Well, I like three because you can break it into three one minute acts. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should be like 25 minutes. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> That's so long. Why not? <laughs> we'll come back to that. We then talked actors. Do you all have to be in it? Do you... Uh, uh, desperately. I desperately have to be in this. <laughs> I would love to do a... You guys, it'd be you guys, and then I do sort of a cameo, like, at one point in the in the movie, you guys go to a convenience store, and I'm buying Campbell's soup. Yeah, like an M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> <But that's it. laughs> style cameo. Yeah. Hitchcock. Like, I mean, like, hello, I'd like to buy soup. See if you can soup. spot Maddie. <laughs> that's actually the director. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of directors... If we group direct it, we should have a group director name. Mmm... Can you think of an example that that we would follow? Well, I can think of like, you know, the Something Brothers. Oh, yeah, we could be the Chavez Brothers. Yeah. Be the Kelly Sisters. But who and how are we going to shoot this? So, like, are you using your budget to hire someone to shoot it? I mean, I wait a minute. We We have to use our budget to hire people to make it. Like, I can't shoot this. Well, that's part of the thing, something to think about with the budget is, or are we doing it all on an iPhone? We'll have to rent gear. We'll have to get catering, location, costumes, actors. There'll be a couple of people. There'll be some hard costs. Also, my phone has not a lot of storage. 
So we're going to have to use somebody else. Yeah, so we can't use Maddie's. <laughs> so we can't, because your screen is cracked, probably. Hey! <laughs> After much debate, we decided the following. We are making a short film. At least one of us, if not all of us, will act in it. The three of us will direct it. We will shoot it in one weekend. We will not use Maddie's phone, but hire a camera person and a sound person. And as for length... Okay, seriously... 25 minutes, I think, is too long. Can we do 10? All right, 10's fine. 10, 10's fine. 5 to 10. 3 to, three three, to, three to five 15. To 3 to 15? <laughs> 15. <laughs> we took Eduardo's advice. It'll be as short as possible. 3 to 10 minutes. Horror is one of those genres, like comedy where it doesn't take much to know if you've made a good product or not. If comedy makes you laugh, it works. If horror makes you scared, it works. And back in the writer's room, we were trying to drill down on what makes us the most scared. And we'd amassed a pretty long list, from kidnapping to dolls. What do you guys think about dolls? Oh, see, uh, also- Dolls in like a weird, you know, an Airbnb and they got dolls everywhere. Yeah, I'm fine with dolls. You're fine? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> from bugs, bugs. Any any bugs that you're afraid of? Yeah, spiders. Spiders? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. A big spider? Yes. To horses. <laughs> not, not to belabor the animal discussion, mm -hmm. but horses are scary. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're big. Yeah, they're scary. It was such a long list that we decided to create a top three. I still think, like, the Michael Jordan of this list, you know what I mean, is mm -hmm. going to be buried alive. Yeah, I agree. But who's the Scotty Pippen? I, I put kidnap, but I don't know if we agree that that should be on the list. I mean, I'll agree with that. It should be on top three. It's, mm -hmm. it's scary. Um, one more. One more, like, uh, wild card out of this. Um, alone in a field while well, a guy comes Probably running at you. Probably number three is alone in a field. Yeah, let's, yeah. Go, let's get it on there. Yeah, yes. Alone in a field. Yeah. We've said it enough. Yeah. Alone in a field. And someone comes running. <laughs> <laughs> so rudimentary. Yeah. Simple. Uh, it's classic. I, I, uh, I no bones we, on, no fat on that no. idea. <laughs> lean to the it's point. So, it's so lean. Um, I think, I think, I think we we came up with a lot of great stuff here. It was this was this gave me some so a little bit of goosebumps every now and then yeah. talking about this. Yeah. Buried alive, being kidnapped, alone in a field, while someone's running at you. <laughs> very, very scary things. But will they inspire a short film? They better, because on the next episode, we are pitching each other our ideas. I have one. This is a classic joke of old that we've tried to do a few times, and, and we always think it's going to be funny, but it never is. But I thought maybe we could make it scary, and that is Fart Vampire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In which it's mm -hmm. a vampire, but here's the twist. He just wants to suck your farts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> That's next time on Let's Make a Horror. Let's Make a Horror is a production of CBC Podcasts and Kelly and Kelly, created by Kelly and Kelly. Hosted by Ryan Beal, Mark Chavez, and Maddie Kelly. This episode was written and produced by Dave Shumka and Chris Kelly. For Kelly and Kelly, the executive producers are Lauren Berkovich and Pat Kelly. Associate producer, Rebecca Peng. For CBC, Anna Ashite is the coordinating producer. Jeff Turner is the senior producer. The executive producer is Chris Oak. And RF Narani is the director of CBC Podcasts. Our theme song is by Chris Kelly. Ah, <sighs> oh, that was quite a record. We all done, Chris? Chris? Chris?